Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third and final video in this series where I'm showing you how to pick a photo from your photo album or use a camera to take a photo and persist those photos to a Swift Data data store. In this final video, I'll show you how you can access and use your device's camera to take a photo with either the front or back camera. And as a bonus, I'll also show you how you can add a quick zoom and pan to your photos. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you're working along with me, you can continue on from the source code that you completed in that last video. However, if you're just jumping in here and you want to work along, you can download the completed project from that last video. Just make sure you download the branch from video 2. I've already started a new branch for this video and the completed source code for this video will also be in that branch. The first thing that you're going to have to do if you want to add a camera capability to your app is to ask the user's permission. So select your application and the target and click on the Info tab. Tap on the plus button on the last line and then search for and add Privacy Camera Usage Description. In the value field, type something like Permission Required to Take Photos with the Camera. Now we'll need to respond to how the user responds to that alert when they try to use the camera. Unfortunately for us, there is not a great Swift UI alternative for the camera. And until there is, the easiest way to implement a camera option is to resort to UIKit. In the Image Picker camera group, let's create a new file and call it Camera Permission. Change the import from Foundation to UIKit. And then add another import for AV Foundation. Next, create an enum called camera permission to act as a namespace so that we can create static functions. And inside there, create another enum called camera error. And we're going to have this conform to both error and localized error. And we'll add two cases for our error, one being unauthorized, and the second will be unavailable. The device may not even have a camera, and that's what you have when you're in your simulator or when you're in the preview. So to handle the errors that might come up, we'll create a computed string property called error description. And it's an optional string. Well, we can switch on self, and then we can return the appropriate NS localized string. By being localized, it means that if you're offering your app in multiple languages, this string will be available for translation. So for my unauthorized case, I'll just indicate that you haven't authorized the camera use. The comment can be left as that is for your translators. For the unavailable case, I'll just indicate that case by saying that the camera is not available for this device. Well, there's a second computed property that you can provide, and that's the recovery suggestion, which is another optional string. Again, we'll switch on self, and then for each case, we'll provide some guidance. Well, in the case of unauthorized, we can tell our users to open the Settings app, go to Privacy and Security, and then the Camera, and then turn it on for this app. In the case of Unavailable, we'll just tell them to use the Photo Album instead. So now we create a static function called Check Permissions that will return an optional camera error. Inside that function, we'll check to see if the image picker controller is source type available with the camera option is true. 
else will return an available case. Well, in the case that it's true, we can determine the status by calling the AV Capture Device Authorize Status for the AV Media Type Video, and then we can switch on that status. So I'm going to let Xco generate the cases. If it is authorized, well, we can return nil. If it's denied, we'll return unauthorized. For the two other cases, we can also return nil. And then to satisfy some unknown case, we'll also return nil. Now we have to create a UI kit camera using that UI image picker controller. And to do this, we'll use a UI view controller representable. So in the image picker camera folder, let's create a new file and call it UI kit camera. Change the import to Swift UI. Then create a struct called UI kit camera and make it conform to the UI view controller representable. Now Xcode will indicate that it doesn't conform to this protocol, so you can let Xcode fix it for you, and that'll create a type alias, and you can specify the UI image picker controller as the type alias. And this will help us to fix the next error that Xcode complains about by allowing it to create the two protocol stubs. Once those steps have been created, you can delete the type alias. In the make UI view controller function, we'll create an instance of a UI image picker controller. Well, we're not going to allow editing, so we're going to specify that the image picker allows editing is set to false. And we are going to specify that the source type is the camera. The image picker delegate is the context.coordinator. And then we'll return the image picker. Well, Xcode will complain again because we don't have a coordinator to act as the delegate. So inside the struct, we're going to create a new final class called coordinator that conforms to both NS object, UI image picker controller delegate, and UI navigation controller delegate. All three are required. And then I'm going to add a property called parent that is of type UI kit camera. And we'll let Xcode generate the initializer for us. So within the class, we can get access to the delegate function did finish picking media with info. In the body of that function, we'll be assigning the selected image to some image property that we'll be passing in as a binding. So in the parent struct, we'll create a binding for selected image, which will be a UI image, but an optional one. Now back in the function, we can use an if let to unwrap an image. if it exists from the info UI image picker controller dot info key dot original image as UI image. And then we can assign it to the parents selected image, that image. After we pick the image, we'll want to dismiss the UI kit view controller so we'll create another environment variable at the top here for the dismiss key path in that parent. Once we have that environment variable created, we can call the dismiss function from that parent. Well, we still need to go to the parent struct to make a coordinator from this class. So I'm going to create one more function called make coordinator that will return a coordinator object that requires some UI kit camera object as the parent, which is self. 
all errors now should go away and we don't need to do anything with the update UI view controller function at all. Well, we can now go back and update our code to use this new UI kit camera. Now our form is going to have to know all about the image that we get. So in the update edit form view model, we'll create one more property called camera image. And that's going to be an optional UI image. Then in the update edit form view, we're going to add a Boolean state property called show camera, and we'll set it equal to false initially. So for the action for the camera button, first we'll need to check if the permission has been granted. So we can call the static check permissions function from the camera permissions enum. And that should return an error if there is one, otherwise nil. But we want to communicate that error to our users. So first let's create another optional state property and that's going to be called camera error. And that will be an optional camera permission camera error. So let's use an if let to unwrap that error and assign it to our camera error property. But it seems like I have something wrong here. I'm not seeing autocomplete for the check permissions function. So let me return to that check permissions enum. I see the problem. I have that static function, but instead of it being within the camera permissions enum, I placed it within the camera error itself. It has to be in the camera permissions enum namespace. So let me move it out. Now when I return, I see I have auto completion working and I can choose it. And I can assign that error to our camera error state property. Else we'll just toggle the show camera value. So we'll either show an alert if there is an error or present the camera for the users to use. So how do we show the alert? Well, we can create an alert with an is presented and error options. Well, is presented can be bound to a constant based on whether the camera error is not equal to nil. And that error is our camera error. In the first closure, we don't need the error, but we can create a button with a label OK. And for the action, we'll just set the camera error back to nil. For the message, we can use the error and present a text view with the errors recovery suggestion, which is optional. So we can nil coalesce that to another string, say, try again later. Well, if there is no error, then we've toggled the show camera so we can present a sheet based on that Boolean property. So we'll create a sheet where is presented is bound to show camera. And then we can present the UI kit camera where the selected images are new view models camera image. And we can tell that camera to ignore the safe area. So once we take a photo and accept that photo, as you'll see, that becomes a selected image. And it will change from nil to some image that we can then convert to a data and assign to our view models data property. So we'll need to create an on change block where all we want to do is watch for changes on that new view models camera image. We can unwrap that image then in the closure using an if let, and we'll know then that it's not nil. And then we can then assign that to the view models data, the image JPEG data with a compression quality of 0 0.8. So let's test this in the preview now, and then we see that we get an error that the camera is unavailable. So let's test this on a real device. I'm going to use my development iPhone. Let me create a new sample object. And I'm going to flip to the front camera and take a selfie 
or the name. So it's going to be me. And then when I tap on the camera button, I'm asked if I want to give permission to access the camera. Well, I'll give that permission. Now, I'm working late here with the lights off except for my screen bar. So let me switch to the front camera. I can take a picture and for better or worse, I can use it. It's replaced the placeholder. So now let me add it to the database. And I can see that it's in my list view as well. Well, let me exit to the home screen and go to the settings, privacy and security, and camera. And you'll see that that permission for this app has been turned on. Well, I can manually turn it off. Now let's return to the app and I'm going to try to take another photo to edit this one. And I'm told that I can't, and I'm given instructions on how to make a change. Well, I'm not going to do that right now, but I have noticed that there is a clear image button showing. And if I tap that, I can remove that pretty bad photo. I can do better than that. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could zoom and pan on an image? Well, that can be quite difficult, but fortunately, someone's created a UI view representable of a UI scroll view that can easily zoom and pan the contents of what's enclosed. Well, unfortunately, the link where I got this from is no longer valid, and I never made note of who the author was, so I can't give credit. However, I do have the code, and you can get that from the gist that I have in the description. So you can just download and expand the zip file and drop it into your image picker camera folder, making sure that you have your target selected and copy if needed option checked. In the sample view where you present the image, you can simply wrap that image along with its modifiers inside a zoomable scroll view. And I can even test this here on the preview. So I'm going to return to the Photos List view, and I'll select one of the items in the list. And then I'll tap the Edit button, and I'm going to pick a photo from the Photos album. And then I'll update the image. And now, on my Sample View form, I can now zoom and pan in that image. So that completes this series. And I hope you found it useful and you'll be able to use this solution in your apps. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And subscribe to my channel, making sure that you enable notifications so that you get notified of new videos when I release them. I typically do that every Sunday. Thanks for watching.